Story recapped here. Today, I'm going to explain a mystery and sci-fi film called Selfless. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. New York real estate mogul Damien Hale is on the top of his world even at his age. Once dubbed as the the man who built New York, his business partners and competitors look up to him for his wisdom while younger men strive to be like him. However, all is not well with him as he starts to feel his illness catching up to him. After being diagnosed with terminal cancer, the doctors have given him a life expectancy of no longer than six months. Damien seems to have accepted his fate, but when a mysterious card from a company called Phoenix Biogenic, he learns that he can still extend his life. When he contacts the organization, he hears about a process called shedding, which will allow him to transfer his consciousness into a new body. Dr. Albright, the company's scientist, attests that the bodies are designed and artificially grown in the laboratory. Not entirely convinced by the idea, Damien leaves Albright's office without making a decision. With time slipping from his hands, Damien decides to visit his estranged daughter Claire, who heads a non-profit organization in the city. He invites her to enjoy a Sunday with him, but she refuses and tells him that she's too busy. Knowing that her organization is short on funds, Damien offers to write her a check. Claire declines and scolds him for expecting to solve all problems with his money. Back in his office, Damien looks up shedding on the internet and finds a lecture given by Dr. Francis Jensen, who envisions a future where the aged and the sick are not limited by their bodies. As he watches the video, Damien starts coughing until he collapses in his chair. In his nursing home, he calls Dr. Albright and agrees to go through with shedding. Albright tells him that he can't get back to his old life once he gets a new body. If he comes across someone he once knew, he must ignore them. Albright further stresses that Damien's death needs to be public and suggests that he should stage it at a restaurant called Commanders in New Orleans. Damien prepares for the procedure and heads to New Orleans, but he stops by a cemetery to bury a metal box before going to the restaurant. Damien meets with his business partner Martin at the restaurant for lunch and orders the coffee suggested by Albright. A few moments after drinking the coffee, he starts feeling drowsy and collapses to the ground. He's loaded into an ambulance, but instead of going straight to the hospital, the driver takes Damien to Albright's lab. Upon his arrival, they make sure if all the metal filing in his teeth has been removed. Albright discloses that the machine that they'll use for shedding is a giant magnet, so any piece of metal can disrupt the process. Damien and another body are loaded simultaneously inside the machine. Once the process is finished, he looks at the bed next to him and sees his old body being covered with a sheet. With his new body, Damien has to undergo training to learn how to walk, run and swim. Albright gives him medication to help him deal with the side effects of shedding. The scientist warns him that he might suffer from hallucinations, migraines, and nausea if he doesn't take the drug. The organization gives him a new identity with the name Edward Kidner, who is supposed to be born on September 20, 1980, in Phoenix, Arizona. Albright takes him to a new house but leaves him with only seven pills for the side effects. He tells Damien that they have to meet weekly, arguing that he's still learning to deal with his new body. The doctor assures him that his current arrangement is only temporary, and he will be able to live where he wants in a few months. To pass the time, Damien starts playing basketball with the locals at a court nearby and encounters Anton, who offers to take him clubbing to welcome him to the neighborhood. Damien starts enjoying his new life and meets with Anton regularly to party. However, when he forgets to take his medication for a day, he hallucinates and sees himself taking part in a military operation. When his vision continues, he sees images of a Hispanic woman caring for her child and a water tower shaped like a pumpkin. When he asks Albright about the vision, the doctor dismisses it and tells him that the hallucinations are his old memories that are scrambled and fueled by unresolved emotions in his past. He surmises that the Latina woman in the hallucination could have been someone he met on a one-night stand a long time ago. Damien tells him that he never mentioned that the woman was a Latina. Albright changes the subject and hands him a ticket to Hawaii for a change of scenery. He gives him twice as many drugs and assures him that he will no longer experience hallucinations as long as he doesn't forget to take them. Damien starts looking up the water tower on the internet and finds out that it is located in St. Louis, Missouri. Before going to the airport, he stops by the cemetery to retrieve the box buried there. At the terminal, he buys a ticket for a flight to St. Louis to find the water tower and the woman. Upon reaching the site, he walks to a house nearby and knocks on the door. No one answers the door, so he decides to go inside. As he goes through the mail, he learns that the woman's name is Madeline Bitwell. As he looks around, Damien is taken aback upon seeing a picture of himself with Madeline and her child. 
He finds out from the photos that the man who once lived in his new body had previously served in the military. While he's staring at the pictures, Madeline enters the house with a gun pointed at Damien. When Damien slowly turns toward Madeline, she breaks down and cries as she recognizes him as her supposedly deceased husband, Mark. While Madeline tries to make sense of the situation, a man knocks on the door, looking for Edward Kidner. When Damien opens it, he sees the man who drove him to the airport. Damien is suddenly distracted by another man grabbing Madeline, allowing the driver to tackle him and pin him down on the table. As the driver subdues him, Anton enters the room and tells Damien how he ended up with Mark's body. Anton reveals that Mark had approached Phoenix Biogenic when the insurance company failed to cover his daughter's treatment expenses. Meanwhile, one of Albright's henchmen burns down Madeline's pickup truck with a flamethrower. Later on, Damien tells Anton that he has to go to the bathroom to take his pills. The driver follows him to the toilet to make sure that he doesn't escape. After taking the medication, Damien attacks the driver and kills him. Upon hearing the noise, Anton and another operative approach the bathroom. Damien shoots the henchman on the shoulder, so Anton tries to negotiate with him. Damien is suddenly startled by an explosion outside, so Anton takes the opportunity to disarm him. The two men struggle to subdue each other until Damien tackles Anton out of the house. Damien immediately runs back inside as Anton shoots at him. While Damien tries to wake up Madeline, Anton orders a henchman to torch the place. As the smoke builds up inside, Damien and Madeline exit the house through a hatch on the floor. Damien shoots the henchman holding the flamethrower on the leg, causing him to fall and set Anton ablaze. As the fire engulfs him, Anton runs towards a tub of water and submerges himself in it. Damien kills the other operatives and leaves the house with Madeline. On their way to the van, Damien explains that he made a deal with Phoenix Biogenic to save her daughter, Anna. Disappearing was part of the deal because he had to do certain things that he won't be able to get away with if he was alive. After the short discussion, they go to the school to fetch Anna, who is very excited to see her father again. The three check into a motel to spend the night. To avoid questions from Madeline, Damien goes outside and looks up shedding on the internet. He comes across a link stating that Jensen had died in a public library. Damien watches the video of Jensen again and notices that the scientist has the same mannerism as Albright when he touches the temples of his eyeglasses. After seeing Albright in the same video, he deduces that Jensen had taken over Albright's body. Having lost his medication, Damien starts hallucinating and remembers when Mark met with Albright in the lab. Damien goes back to New Orleans to see Dr. Jensen's wife, Phyllis, who is suffering from Alzheimer's disease. He pretends to be a student of Jensen to find out how he can access her husband's research, but she doesn't know where they were stored. When he learns that Albright visits her each week, he convinces Phyllis to call him and ask him to come over. When Albright arrives, Damien asks him for more pills at gunpoint. Albright starts revealing that the medication not only stops the hallucinations but also keeps his consciousness intact. Without it, his mind will fade, and Mark's consciousness will return. However, each dose of the pill takes away parts of Mark's memories, including his military training and his instincts. If he continues taking the drug regularly, Mark will soon be gone for good after a year. Damien asks Albright to take him back to the lab, but a henchman manages to disarm him on their way out of the house. Damien starts hallucinating again while they're walking towards the door. As they get closer to the vehicle, Madeline approaches them. A henchman bashes her with a car door, so Damien breaks free to protect her. He kills one henchman by snapping his neck. Another operative tackles him and tries to strangle him. Madeline gets hold of a gun and shoots, hitting the henchman in the temple. Damien hears the man call him Eddie and notices the exact necklace that Anton wore on his neck. Anton reveals that he went through multiple sheddings already. He taunts Madeline, hinting that her husband is keeping secrets from her. Anton then tells her to ask Damien if he knows her birthday. Damien takes Anton's pills and drives away with Madeline and Anna. At a gasoline station, Madeline confronts Damien to ask if he knows any details about their life together. Damien confesses that he had taken over Mark's body and tells her that her husband is already dead. Damien offers to help Madeline and her child, knowing that Albright and his men will kill them if they catch up to them. The three stop by Martin's house to ask for help in getting out of the country. Damien tells Martin that he went through shedding and survived. Martin, however, refuses to believe until Damien shows him a deed to the first building they bought together and tells him what they did when they celebrated their first successful deal. After being convinced that Damien is inhabiting a new body, Martin prepares a plane for them. As they wait, Damien teaches Anna how to swim. After the lesson, she hears a whirring noise from across the hall and follows it. 
Damien and Madeline soon start looking for Anna after he notices that all the mirrors in the house are covered. When they enter a room full of toys, they see Anna playing with a young boy. Damien takes Anna and tells Madeline that the boy is Martin's young son, Tony, but he died two years ago. Martin confesses that he had contacted Phoenix Biogenics when Tony died. He tells Damien that operatives from Phoenix are already waiting for them outside his property. Damien tells Martin that the bodies that Phoenix uses are not exactly grown from scratch but were taken from living people. After learning the truth about shedding, Martin decides to help Damien create a diversion so Madeline and Anna can escape. Martin tells Damien to meet them at a truck stop, where they'll be waiting for him till midnight. Damien drives out of the house and looks around for any car following him. Two cars soon emerge and shoot at him. Further down the road, Anton and another operative wait for Damien in separate vehicles. One of the henchmen notices that Damien is alone in the van, so Anton orders another driver to check Martin's house. The two vehicles manage to box Damien in, so he reverses the van to smash the car behind him. However, when he starts driving forward, the car gets hooked to the rear bumper of his van. Meanwhile, Anton drives toward them from the other direction and starts shooting as soon as he sees Damien's van. With a henchman's car still behind him, he suddenly turns just before he reaches Anton's car. Anton hits the other operative's vehicle, sending it hurtling down the road. Anton becomes incapacitated after smashing into a tree. Outside the house, Madeline and Anna get lured into the car of a Phoenix operative as Martin tries to catch up to them. Damien waits for them at the truck stop, but only Martin arrives. Martin tells Damien that he tried to stop them, but they got into the car before he could do anything. Martin confesses that he was the one who sent the Phoenix Biogenic card to Damien because he felt like he owed Damien for letting him be a part of his business. He gives Damien some pills and reveals that he was able to reverse engineer it, so they don't have to depend on Albright anymore. Damien refrains from taking pills for the day in the hopes that he will discover the location of Albright's laboratory in his visions. He soon learns that the lab is located in an abandoned warehouse that stores Mardi Gras floats. Damien breaks into the lab on his own and comes across the shedding room, where he sees Anton and another man laid down on gurneys. Albright arrives and tells Damien that he has resurrected Anton three times already, and he has become more loyal to him each time. He reveals that Madeline is being prepared for shedding for another client, and her daughter's organs will be harvested. Damien shoots Albright through the glass, but he soon discovers that it is bulletproof. As the other guards arrive to subdue Damien, Albright tells him that he intended to use the body of a 40-year-old accountant for Anton Shedding. But now that Damien is at the lab, he will use Mark's body instead because his military training and hardwired instincts have been proven useful. While the guards struggle to restrain Damien, he puts a bullet casing in his mouth. After the shedding process, Albright starts asking questions to test if it was successful. When asked how many children he has, the man smirks and says he has none. He only had pictures of kids that he downloaded from the internet. After leaving the shedding room, he asks the henchmen where they are keeping Madeline and her daughter. Damien kills the two guards who were watching Madeline. Meanwhile, Albright notices the bullet casing in the shedding chamber, causing him to worry that the shedding must have failed. With guards still after them, Damien, Madeline, and Anna end up in the viewing room next to the shedding chambers. Albright feels confident that Damien wouldn't kill him because if he does, there will be no one to provide him with the pills. Instead, Damien looks around the room for something he could use to smash the glass and seize the flamethrower. Damien starts reading the formula for the drug to let Albright know that he doesn't need him anymore. He then fires up the flamethrower to burn the bulletproof glass and kill Albright. Damien sends Madeline and Anna on their way to the Caribbean. He then visits Claire's office and gives her a letter, telling her what he wished he had done for her while he was still alive. After leaving the office, he looks back up and sees Claire through the window smiling as she reads the letter. Days later, he wakes up in a room that is unfamiliar to him. He sees a laptop on the other side of the room and, and clicks the video file on the desktop. In the video, Damien addresses Mark, informing him that he was the one who bought his body. He tells him that he's grateful that the body has allowed him to live a few months longer. He says he has stopped taking the pills, and he has waited days for Mark to regain control of his own body. Damien welcomes him back and asks him to take good care of his wife and daughter. Mark soon rides a boat on the way to another island to find Madeline and Anna. When he arrives, Madeline initially thinks that he's Damien but soon realizes that he's Mark when she notices how he's hugging her. Madeline calls out to Anna, so she could finally be with his father. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.